this lesson, we're going to go over Generally Accepted Auditing Standards, or GAS. Now, before we discuss GAS in more detail, I want you to understand kind of where GAS is now and where it will be going in the future. Now, Generally Accepted Auditing Standards were put in place by the Accounting Standards Board, um, Auditing Standards Board, but subsequently has been changed a little bit because of the formation of the PCAOB, Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. Now, with the formation of the Co Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, they've decided that they wanted to have a vested interest in the auditing standards and therefore started to create their own auditing standards based on what they perceived are important for public company audits. And so what we've seen is now two types of generally accepted auditing standards. We've got the PCOB's types and we have the ASB's types. Now, in addition, we have some issues with international law and how international accounting standards and auditing standards have been put together. And so we even have this overall arching third type of auditing standards. Now, fortunately for all of us, the PCOB is trying to converge a lot of their standards into international standards so that we're all under the same umbrella. Now, for generally accepted accounting auditing standards, those are being changed right now by the uh, Account Auditing Standards Board, the ASB. And so we're kind of seeing this trend where we're going to get away from the, possibly get away from the 10 gas that we're going to be learning today. Um, but for now, we're going to be learning the generally accepted auditing standards because they're kind of broad in, in nature and they fit what our discussion of what an auditor does at the end of the day. Now, as we go through these lessons, we'll decide to modify them and add some things that are more specific to public companies. But for this part, we're going to give you the original auditing standards boards, 10 generally accepted auditing standards that are much more broad in nature and not as specific as some of the other ones. When we get to the specificness of the other ones, then we will uh, discuss them kind of as we go. So the 10 generally accepted auditing standards are broken out into three sections. We've got general standards, we've got standards of field work, and we've got standards of reporting. Now, the general standards are generally, these three standards are for all of our audits. So generally speaking, when we're doing these audits, these are things that we have to take into consideration. The first one is adequate training and proficiency of an auditor. So that makes sense, right? If we're going to do an audit, we must have adequate training and we have proficiency in the audit that we're about to do. Now, there's nothing in GAS that says you have to have it prior to starting an audit. So, we could get the adequate training, we could get the proficiency as we're doing the audit, but at the end of the day, that auditor must have adequate training and proficiency of the audit. And so, uh, what we sometimes see often here is um, a lot of businesses or a lot of public accounting firms will specialize, or they'll have a section of people that are specialized in a certain type of audit, like the audit of manufacturing or the retail sector or the real estate sector. And because of that, they are more adequate or more equipped to do those types of audits. Now, let's say a client comes in with aerospace. Well, if they don't have that training and proficiency, they may decide not to take that job on unless they're willing to put in the time, money, and effort to getting that training and proficiency throughout that audit. Okay. Number two, they must be independent of the client. Now, we haven't talked a lot about this, but when we're auditing a client, we must be independent in fact and appearance. And what does that mean? In fact means we don't actually own their stock. We don't have any business contacts with them. We don't have business relationships with them unless it's specifically okay by um, some standards. But basically, um, in independence in fact, we really don't have anything that would impair our independence. Now, independence in appearance has to do with the appearance from the outside. Do we have a relationship with, with them or not? Okay, So maybe we don't actually own them and we don't have any independence issues, but if we're always buddy-buddy with them every single night at, let's say, uh, a restaurant or an evening activity or we're traveling with them a lot, then we may not be necessarily independent in appearance because people will see that relationship as one that impairs our judgment as auditors. But on that general standard, we must be independent of that client. Number three, we must exercise due professional care. We talked about that in the previous lesson. We have to go in with a questioning eye. 
So as we go into this audit, we have this questioning eye. We don't believe everything the client says. We don't believe everything that the client gives us. We're going to have to do some work to make sure that we know we can trust the information that's given to us. So again, just because they're Microsoft, just because they're Apple, just because they have a lot of money, doesn't mean that we trust their financial statements. And we, when we walk into their organization, we have a questioning eye because we're exercising due professional care. Now the next section that we have is the standard of field work. These are all of the things that we must be thinking about and doing in the field work section of our auditing engagement. Okay. So the first one, we got to adequately plan and supervise all of our assistants. So that makes sense. When we're actually in the field doing the work, we must adequately plan the audit so that we know what the outcomes are and we know what we're doing and we need to supervise our assistants. So in the previous lesson, we talked about this hierarchy of an accounting firm. We've got our staff, we've got our seniors, we've got our managers, and we've got our partners. The partners better be, according to the standard, supervising all of the assistants. That senior in charge should be supervising that assistant, that associate, that staff member at the very end of the totem pole. So everybody must be adequately supervised because that's important to make sure that we're doing the, inf doing the work correctly. So again, standard of field work, the first one is adequately plan and supervise an audit. Now, number five, or the fifth generally accepted auditing standard in the standard of field work, is internal control should be obtained by the, by the auditor to determine the nature, timing, and extent of tests. Now, number five may be a little bit confusing because we haven't really talked about necessarily the nature, time, and extent and how that goes into internal control. But as an auditor, when we go into a client, we need to understand the internal controls that the company has um, implemented. And we need to know, are they working? Do we trust the internal controls that the company has put together? And once we figure out if they're working or not, then we're going to determine the nature, timing, and extent of our own tests on their financial statements. Okay, so when we do the audit, we want to know how much are we needing to test and what information do we need to get and when do we need to get that in order to make sure that the work that we're doing is appropriate for the opinion that we're going to give later on. Now, number six, or the last standard of field work, is sufficient appropriate audit evidence is obtained. Okay, so when we go out to an audit and we do these tests and we figure out the nature, timing, and extent of the test, then we are getting sufficient amount, appropriate amount of audit evidence. Sufficient means we've got enough. Appropriate means that they actually are appropriate to what we're trying to test at the end of the day. So uh, sufficient and appropriate might be that if they have 20 stores in the United States, we actually go physically go to their inventory accounts of five of them. That's 25% of them. Okay, So we have sufficient. We're going to five. We're going to 25 based on our nature, time, and extent of internal controls. That is sufficient. Appropriate is we actually go there. That's more appropriate than maybe not going there and relying on a report given to us by the organization who we're auditing. Okay, So sufficient, appropriate audit evidence is obtained in the standard of field work. Now the next four standards or the last four standards are that ha uh, has to do with standards of reporting. So before we report our opinion or as we're reporting our opinion, these are the things that we have to take into consideration when we issue that opinion. Number seven, that the financial statements are in accordance with some type of standard. In this case, in the United States, we talk about U.S. GAAP. So when we look at the financial statements, we look at the financial statements and we know that they're in accordance with some type of standard. What is that standard for us? For that, st our standards are U.S. GAAP, United States Generally Accepted Accounting Principle, or maybe the principle of international financial reporting standards. Okay, so whatever the standards are, that we know that they are in accordance with those standards. Okay, number eight standards of reporting explicitly state consistency issues. So the eighth standard that we have to think about and the second standard in the standard of reporting is that if there are any consistency issues from year to year as far as we're looking at a number from last year and it was under FIFO and this year it's under LIFO that we have explicitly said that or state that in the financial statement that's why it says explicitly we've explicitly stated that consistency issue 
in our financial statement. If we have not, then we need to at the end of the day because that's what gas says it, tells us that we need to do. Number nine, third one for the standard of reporting, all disclosures are included. So number nine just says that any disclosures that should have been included is properly included in the financial statements or the notes in the financial statements as um, appropriate to the auditing standards. Okay, so um, if there has to be disclosure on how revenue is recognized, then that disclosure is included. Um, uh, if we need to know what the expense recognition principle is for the depreciation of equipment, then we need to put how we uh, calculate equipment depreciation. So any disclosures that need to be in that financial statement are reported in that financial statement. Now I know that seems kind of silly, but there are times when maybe a company doesn't want it to put a disclosure, and we as an auditor know that they haven't put that disclosure, then we need to push upon our client to put that disclosure, otherwise we may issue a qualified or an adverse opinion without that disclosure in there, okay? Last standard is we're gonna express an opinion. Well, that's simple enough. We're gonna express an opinion, which is what we hope to do at the end of the day. So once we uh, get to that end, we're expressing an opinion, we're putting that opinion in the financial statement so that the user of the financial statements knows that we have audited the financial statements for material misstatements, okay? So again, the 10 generally accepted auditing standards or GAS include three sections, general, standard of field work, and standard of reporting and then we break them down into those 10 GAS, okay? The first three are general standards, the next three are the standard of field work, and the last four standard of reporting. So for our general standards, we have adequate training and proficiency as an auditor on the engagement. We're independent of the client, both in uh, fact and appearance. Number three, we exercise due professional care. So those are generally speaking, when we're doing this audit, these are the things that we have to take into consideration. When it comes to the actual field work or doing the work of the audit, there are three things that we need to think about, that we've adequately planned and supervised all of our assistants, that we've obtained information about their internal control in order to help us with nature, timing, and extent of the evidence and the tests that we're about to do, and that we provide or we get sufficient appropriate audit evidence to corroborate all of the management assertions that we're trying to test. The last four are our standards of reporting, and that includes accordance with U.S. GAAP. So there's some type of standards in which the financial statements are um, two. So in this case, U.S. GAAP, we've explicitly stated all of our consistency issues. If there are any consistency issues, we're trying to go from last year to this year. So when we mean consistency issues, again, we mean if we're trying to compare last year's financial statement to this year's financial statement, the way everything was calculated was the same. If there was, if there was a change to the way that something was calculated, those consistency issues were already disclosed in the financial statement. Number nine, all disclosures are included, so no disclosures were omitted or accidentally omitted from the financial statements. And lastly, the thing that we need to do is uh, issue an, or express an opinion. So again, these are the 10 generally accepted auditing standards, and this is the minimum performance requirement of an auditor. So if we were gonna say, did an auditor do their work? We pin all of their audit work on these 10 things, okay? Were they adequately trained? Were they independent? Did they exercise due professional care? Did they adequately plan? Did they look at internal controls? Did they obtain a sufficient audit evidence? Did they do it in accordance with some type of standard? Did they explicitly state any consistency issues? Were all the disclosures were there? And did they express an opinion? If they've done this, then theoretically, minimally, minimally is the key word, they have done their job, okay? If they've done all of this, they've minimally done their job, okay? And that's important to understand as an auditor. So again, these are kind of the broad ones. We're starting to see some change with the PCOB and international standards. And so um, these will start to change. And as they start to change, we'll update the video and we'll update what you need to know in the future lessons in regards to auditing.